Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here with all of you. Thank you for coming. Uh, I am very excited and pleased to be a part of this event. Uh, but before we begin, uh, I would like to take a few moments to acknowledge a few uh, folks who have come and joined us today. Uh, some of my colleagues, uh, even though we are uh, it's, we're still trying to get a little bit of summer out of this. Uh, we have several of my colleagues here. Assembly members, Victor Pichardo from the Bronx. Assembly member, <laughs> Assembly member Helene Weinstein from Brooklyn. And Assembly member Joanne Simon from Brooklyn. Today represents the culmination of months and months of hard work. Hard work from a tremendous coalition of advocates who fought to make today a reality. And I would like to thank them personally for the amazing work that they did to secure passage of this important legislation. This coalition was broad and included women's groups, student representatives, reproductive rights groups, LGBT groups, sexual assault, domestic violence, advocacy groups, and providers. And of course, the person that I most would like to thank at this point is the governor. This isn't the first time the governor has been aware of a critical issue on campuses that affect students. When he was attorney general, he tackled an issue of transparency in student lending, and people should remember that as I do. So thank you for that too, governor. <laughs> the governor put the full force of administration behind this effort, fought tirelessly, to shine a light on the issue of sexual violence and to treat it as the crime that it is. Today we are here to make sure that a single message is heard loud and clear throughout the state. Enough is enough. It's one thing to pass a bill, it's another thing to ensure that the provisions are well known and promoted so that the motivation behind the legislation to make certain that college campuses are safer places for all students is realized. College is increasingly stressful. Tuition is higher than when many of us went to school. The pressure to succeed, the pressure to find a high paying position after college these are all more pressing now than when I went to school. When I went to school, our primary focus was on finding ourselves, exploring all of our interests, and becoming a whole person. Now students are forced to make more focused choices. They have to find a major immediately, and they have to follow through, and so it's crucial that the concern for their personal safety not be a deterrent to pursuing their studies. So today, with this new law taking effect this semester, students at colleges and universities statewide, public and private, will benefit from a clear set of policies to combat sexual assault and address these crimes when they do occur. Now it's up to all of us to spread the word. That's what today is about, kicking that off. And with that in mind, it is my pleasure to introduce someone who played a very important role in this fight, a dear friend, and equally important, I guess, the governor's special advisor, <laughs> Christine Quinn. Thank you.
Thank you. Well, first, I want to thank um, Assemblymember Glick. And she, as chair of the Higher Ed Committee, and as uh, uh, if this gets the governor in trouble with other assembly members, it's my personal statement, not as his advisor, the leading feminist in the state assembly, in my opinion, um, really guided this legislation with a keen eye and a thought of not just getting it right, but getting it perfect because that's what students and that's what survivors of sexual assault and rape deserve. So I want to thank you, Deborah. You gave this so much attention and so much work. And I want to just echo Deborah's thanks to the students and the advocates who are here today and who did so much on this legislation. I think it is incredibly fair to say that we in the governor's office drove you crazy, and you probably had very little time to do other work during you know, working hours, but thank you. We wanted to make sure that this legislation was legislation that was about survivors and about students. And we can't do that if we don't have students and survivors and advocates bringing that voice onto the legislative page. So thank you so very much for that. And it's great to be back here at NYU because this is, of course, where we kicked off this effort in January, where the governor announced that this was going to be one of his highest legislative priorities and that we weren't just going to pass it, we were going to pass it this legislative session. And to be here on the first day of school, I think, really sends a strong message about this law. And under Governor Cuomo and Lieutenant Governor Hochul, New York State has taken on the fight to address rape and sexual assault on college campuses, to make sure that we stop this scourge, but until that happens, that we make sure that victims know they're heard, that there's a clear process for their cases to be addressed, and that there are clear services. And that's why it is so great, not that just we passed a law, but that we passed the strongest, most transparent, most progressive law anywhere in the country. And as we've seen so many other times under Governor Cuomo's leadership, whether it is around appropriate and safe gun laws or marriage equality, when New York leads, the rest of the country follows. And although... Although we want a good federal law, and we're grateful to Senator Gillibrand and Congresswoman Maloney and others who are fighting for that, we can't wait. So I know now our job is also to get, not because Governor Cuomo wouldn't give people easy jobs, to just get 49 other states to pass our law uh, into their state law as well. And this law puts in place clear requirements for private and public colleges. SUNY already led the way, but now we have it for the private it makes sure, legally, that acts of sexual violence are treated as crimes, and it prevents schools from sweeping those crimes under the rug and assures that we have public, transparent reporting so schools can be held accountable or given assistance if that's what they need. The law also ensures that all colleges statewide adopt a definition of affirmative consent. That yes means yes, and a definition that is clear, voluntary, and unambiguous. And there was a lot of discussion about this in the process, but to me it makes so much sense. Why for so long have we been discussing how loudly you screamed no? versus in a sexual encounter, whether you affirmatively said yes. So I want to thank the governor for standing firm on that provision, which some pushed against, but is really very progressive and feminist leadership. The law also is very smart in the sense that it mandates an amnesty policy, because we heard directly from students that colleges would say, oh, you saw that happen? You were at a fraternity party? Are you 21? Were you drinking? 
Were there drugs at that party? So we put an amnesty policy in place so that survivors and witnesses, if they may have violated campus rules around issues, say, of alcohol, they know they can come forward without being prosecuted under those violations. The law also creates the first ever statewide Bill of Rights for survivors of sexual assaults. In order to specifically, the point of this is to specifically inform students of their legal rights and choices and inform students of how they can access supportive resources if they want them. Passing this law, as I said, was a tough challenge, but the governor and Deborah and Speaker Hasty and others came forward and we succeeded. And I want to just share uh, with everyone here how many emails I got from survivors who said thank you to the governor, thank you to the assembly, thank you to the Senate, because we feel heard. For the first time, somebody said, yes, this did happen to you. We know it happened to you, and we're responding. And that really will change those survivors' lives forever, in my opinion. And so we're here today to make sure that change continues. And that's why the governor has asked the Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul and me to kick off a new statewide campaign to promote the facts about the law. Because a law is only a piece of paper if people don't use it and know about it. So the Lieutenant Governor and I will be traveling to schools across the state, meeting with students, administrators, students groups to raise awareness and educate everyone about what the law means and what the law requires. And we want to make sure those conversations just aren't in small rooms, but they spread out across the campus to the thousands or tens of thousands of students who are on that campus. So as part of that effort, we'll be, handle, be giving out these new easy-to-carry cards that provide all of the basic bullets about the law. They talk about your rights, about the Bill of Rights. They also have a part here that you can cut off and put in your wallet or your purse. And it has the number for the state troopers hotline. It also has a space for you to write in your local campus number or victim services number or local police number. We want to make sure people literally have this in the palm of their hands so they know that enough is enough is there to help them, support them, and be with them if they are a victim of rape or sexual assault. The Lieutenant Governor and I are very glad to take on this challenge. We're going to be making sure that we give these out at campuses across the state before October 5th when the law goes into effect on college campuses. And we ask all of you, I know you're not shocked by this, to help us. So we will, you'll be hearing from us later today. Um, this uh, passage of this legislation, as I said, was a great coalition effort. It was led by the governor and the lieutenant governor and included legislative leaders, advocates, students, but we also had a very important voice of our New York State Police Superintendent, Joe D'Amico, in this process. And you know, all we've heard in the past, and I know this isn't going to be a surprise to the superintendent, there's been criticisms that law enforcement doesn't always take rape and sexual assault as seriously as they should. And the superintendent has heard those concerns and really, no surprise at all, risen to the occasion and said this special unit is going to make sure we get it right and set a new standard in New York State that we will also spread across the country. So I really want to thank our superintendent so much. He. Uh, I'll bring a little bias that I think will be okay. He's a New York City guy originally, so he has served uh, the city and the state with great valor and great honor, and I give you someone who's gonna help protect college students, our superintendent, Joe D'Amico. Thank you, Miss Christine Quinge. As a New York City person, I could tell you she did a great job for us here in New York City as city council speaker, and a phenomenal job with the state, so thank you. Good morning. As you heard, I'm Joseph D'Amico, superintendent of the New York State Police, and I'm here today to announce the creation of a new sexual assault victims unit within the state police, which will work exclusively to combat the problem of sexual assaults on our college campuses. 
The new unit's part of Governor Cuomo's new Enough is Enough legislation, which he signed into law this past July right here at NYU. This unit will consist of a team of senior and experienced state police investigators who will be deployed to troops all across the state. They work out of our state police headquarters and have two main duties. First, to provide investigative assistance, including forensic support, to college and local police who are investigating campus sexual assault. Second, we'll be providing training both to law enforcement, and that includes the campus police, and to the college communities. This training will involve making sure those who respond to reported sexual assault crimes know the law and are well-versed in the latest investigative and interrogation techniques. The unit will also conduct presentations on campus, both to students and staff, on the laws regarding sexual assault and what their rights and responsibilities are. And I think that these presentations could be included in new student orientation programs. The unit will go beyond just usual law enforcement and training. We'll be reaching out to each university and college all around the state, trying to forge partnerships with administration, campus police, student groups, evaluating the needs of the specific college, offering our assistance in any way we can. The state police will also employ specially trained sexual assault nurse examiners as consultants to ensure evidence is properly documented and collected and handled right up to our police lab. They'll also be available as consultants to help out medical facilities who are responsible for collecting such evidence. The state police will, um, our, our number one goal will be our efforts to fight campus sexual assault and, and our goal here is protect each and every student that attends college in New York State. Sex assault is a serious crime. New York State Police and all of our law enforcement partners are committed to investigating every reported campus sexual assault thoroughly. We won't tolerate police agencies or campus security who don't take it seriously. Victims. <laughs> and victims need to understand you're not alone in this. State police and law enforcement are here to help. We see the trauma that's caused every day by this type of violence. We want to make sure the victims understand they shouldn't feel discouraged or embarrassed when reporting such a crime. It's difficult, it takes courage, but reporting is important, not only for the victim, but for law enforcement, so we can fully investigate, prosecute the crime, bring the offenders to justice. I just want to recognize the efforts of Governor Cuomo, who's responsible for enacting such an aggressive law the most aggressive in our country. It's designed to fight campus sexual assault. I also want to thank him for all the work he's done raising awareness about this very important issue. And now it's, it's my pleasure to introduce someone who played an important role in making this le legislation pass earlier this year, Monica Sobern. Thank you so much. My name is Monica Sobrin, and I'm a junior at Fordham University. Earlier this year, I began working with the governor's office on Enough is Enough as a member of Students United for Safer Schools New York. Students United is a coalition of survivors and anti-sexual assault activists from colleges across New York State. We're working to make our campuses safer by pushing our schools to adopt fairer and more transparent policies increasing resources available to survivors, and improving primary prevention education. In March, a group of us spent spring break in Albany lobbying for Enough is Enough. During this time, we met with state legislators to discuss the governor's efforts to end the epidemic of sexual violence on college campuses across the state. No one should have to be violated in such an intimate way. And because of this law, we're one step closer to that goal. Now, it's time to spread word of the single most progressive legislation to combat sexual and dating violence on college campuses. Each one of New York's 1.2 million college students must be educated about what consent and healthy relationships do and do not look like. 
We must continue to fight tirelessly against sexual violence. And that's why this awareness campaign is crucial to the law's success. By talking about the problem and making people aware of their rights, this progress will become more than just a sheet of paper. It will become permanent. I've lived in New York almost my entire life. I know that we're leaders, we're trailblazers, and we are not going to sit back and do nothing while these injustices occur to our friends, children, and loved ones. This legislation is a tremendous victory in the fight against sexual violence. It's a victory for survivors and allies, for students and parents, for women, men, and people of all genders and races. This work, however, is never over. Let's continue to show the nation what New Yorkers mean when we proclaim enough is enough. <laughs> Thank you to everyone who has helped us and me personally come this far. Thank you to my friends and family especially those who gave me cookies and hugs during those particularly rough nights. Thank you to my fellow survivors and advocates, to state legislators, and of course, the governor for all of his hard work and dedication. <laughs> now, it is my pleasure to introduce the one who led the fight for this le impressive legislation, Governor Andrew Cuomo. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. First, to Monica, let's give her a big round of applause for her strength and her courage. I have such total respect for the survivors, the, to find the strength to go through what they went through and then to find the strength to share it and, and have the energy uh, and the compassion to take their experience and share it with others so others don't have to go through that pain. Let's give her another round of applause, Monica Sobrin. To NYU, we thank them very much for this invitation. Not surprisingly, not every school wanted us coming here uh, talking about this issue, but NYU uh, was very progressive and very welcoming. And let's give NYU a round of applause. <laughs> to our elected officials who uh, passed this legislation, which was a lot of work, it was a lot of lobbying, the activists, the advocates, everyone had to get involved. Don't be, uh, let's not kid ourselves, there was a lot of opposition to this law. Uh, there were a lot of very powerful interests in this state that didn't want to hear the law discussed, that didn't want to admit the problem, uh, that didn't want to admit that we have an epidemic on campuses. Uh, so it was pushing the stone uphill, but they did it. Uh, it was led by Chris Quinn and our great lieutenant governor. Let's give them a round of applause. We have a secret weapon in the state assembly, which is we have really powerful women in the state assembly. And... You will see a sample here with Assemblyman, Assembly Member Deborah Glick, who just on every issue, she is a fighter, she is smart, she is tenacious, and she's going to deliver. Let's give her a round of applause for what she's done here. And her colleagues, Joanne Simon and Helene Weinstein, who are here, we thank them very much. Victor Pichardo, Assemblyman, thank you very much for being here. 
and all the people who worked so hard to make this uh, bill a reality. It is timely now because this is back to school time. I can feel it in my own house. I have three young ladies going off to college, and this is the period of time, especially this weekend, when things disappear from the home. Uh, there are a series of boxes all over the house, and things just disappear. Small things, big things, uh, toiletries, clothing, toasters disappear. <laughs> and since there are three of them, nobody knows anything, you know. <laughs> it was the other one, you know, they'll point, they'll whisper, I think it was Kara, I think it was Michaela. Because they're packing up and they think it's a scavenger hunt. Take everything you can from the house uh, to bring back to the dorm. Uh, so it is that, that time of year. I have three young ladies. Uh, the Cuomo family, the extended Cuomo family, has been blessed. Uh, my father and mother, 13 grandchildren, 14 grandchildren. Of the 14 grandchildren, of the 14 grandchildren, 13 girls of the 14 grandchildren. The 14th grandchild was born a male child and was named Mario. They were considering Jesus, but they went with Mario. Uh, and, um, but 13 girls. And it's actually changed uh, my orientation as a father. Growing up in that context, I've seen the world, frankly, uh, through a different set of eyes and through a different orientation. And I've become more aware and more attuned to women's issues and more attuned to the differential between the way this society treats men and it treats women. In New York State, we take our responsibility seriously to lead. You heard Chris Quinn speak about New York's leadership role, which is very true. New York is not just one of the other states. I say with all due New York arrogance, <laughs> we are special. We are the progressive capital of the nation, and we take on the tough ones, and we want to take on the tough ones, and we want to lead on the tough ones. Uh, and you look at the tough issues, the issues that society hasn't been able to grapple with, issues like discrimination, discrimination against the gay people, that's what marriage equality was really all about, discrimination against gay people, and New York stood up and said, not anymore, it's not going to happen here, and we passed the marriage equality law. We took on the issue of gun violence, and we passed the SAFE Act, saying we have to stop the plague of illegal guns and mentally ill people with guns. This past session, we dealt with the issue of bias in the criminal justice system and people losing trust in the criminal justice system, and we appointed the Attorney General as a special prosecutor to handle any case where police kill an unarmed person, which is a national plague. So we take on the tough issues, and we're proud of it. Almost all of the issues have a common denominator, and that is they start with denial. And the first step, is admitting the problem, as hard as that may be, and looking in the mirror as a society and being honest about the scope of the problem. And that was the first step for us here. We have chronic sexism that still exists in society. Well, how can you say that as governor of the state of New York? Because it's true. And because if you don't admit it and you don't say it, if you don't acknowledge the problem, you are condemning yourself to live with it forever. And the sexism and the discrimination is chronic and it is pervasive. We have a chronic epidemic of violence against women. Domestic violence is a chronic problem in this state, in this nation, that we have failed to come to terms with, that we failed to admit. We have more animal shelters than domestic violence shelters. And we don't want to admit that we have a problem of violence against women. 
We don't want to admit that it's in some of the highest institutions in this country, that it exists in the military. God bless Senator Gillibrand for taking that issue and raising it up and having the courage to speak up on that issue. And part of that is the issue we're talking about today, but it is part of a larger pattern. And you can see it all across different aspects of society. Women earn 84% in general of what men earn. It's in the employment field. They earn $11,000 less per year than their male counterparts. 82% of the victims of domestic violence are women. Women are twice as likely to be victims of housing discrimination, lending discrimination. Women are twice as likely to be a single parent living in poverty. They're twice as likely to live out the end of their life in poverty as a male. In 2011, 77% of sex-based employment discrimination were filed by women. Women comprise 52% of the workforce, but only 14% of executive officers, 8% of top earners, and 4% of Fortune CEOs are women. So it is pervasive in society, and acknowledging that is the first step and acknowledging this specific as part of that larger problem that we have to deal with. And it really does play out in the area of sexual violence on campuses. And that's why this law is so important. Because it does say very simply, enough is enough. And it's time to ch change the culture and change the mindset and change the paradigm. The burden is not on the woman. These court cases where the court goes around and around, well, was the woman effective in saying no? How many times did you say no? How loud were you when you said no? At what intervals did you say no? It's not about did the woman say no before she was attacked. It's whether or not the woman said yes. And that's what affirmative yes means. It's not the woman who is the perpetrator. It's not that the woman should be cross-examined. Well, how much did you have to drink? Did you have any drugs? What's your past sexual behavior? She's not the one on the stand. She's the victim of the incident, not a co-conspirator in the incident. And we have, to, we have to say to men, boys who think they're men, this is not an act of strength. This is an act of weakness. This is not machismo. This is cowardice. And it is not a sign of virility or dominance or power. It's a sign of a sick, weak individual who needs help. And most importantly, this is not a matter to be handled by the school administration. This is not a violation of school policy or school code or school ethics or the school motto. It may be all of that, but frankly, I don't care because it's something far, far worse. It is a crime. It violates the law. And I don't care what the school thinks about it. And I don't care what the administrative panel thinks about it. I care about what a jury thinks about it and what a judge thinks about it. And that's why we have to change the mindset from this is a matter for the school authorities to handle through the campus security and say to people, you have an option and a right to contact law enforcement and have professional, objective law enforcement come in and handle the matter. The state police will have a special detail.
that does just this. And I applaud Superintendent D'Amico for taking a progressive view of law enforcement, understanding that law enforcement has more challenges to deal with today than they've ever had to deal with before on all sorts of levels. But this is one of them. And to have a specialized unit to respond to these types of cases, to be able to counsel women and talk to women and give them the comfort they need and still get the information and preserve the evidence to prosecute these matters as a crime. That's what this law did that is so important. And what we're saying now is it is up to you. I had this conversation with my daughters uh, who, are, who have headed out now, leaving me with an empty home. It is a conversation that should be had with every student, every freshman student. We've told the schools, we provided them with the material. We said include it in all the orientation material. Every freshman, every returning student should know the rules of behavior have changed. Every woman should know that, that they have more rights than they had before, and every male should know. Behavior is different. You're not getting away with what you got away with before. And remember, one of the reasons why it's important that we enforce the laws and we catch the assailants is because it's a very small number of people who do it over and over and over again. So when a woman doesn't prosecute the case, and when a woman, which I understand, says, you know, I don't want to relive this. I just want to forget about it. I understand that, but it comes at a cost. Because then that person is out there again. And if they get away with it once, they believe they can get away with it again. Some estimates are 90% of the assaults are committed by 3% of the men. But they're doing it over and over and over again. And that's why treating this as a law enforcement matter is so important. So you stop it and you protect other people. But it is up to you. We have the cards. We have the website. The schools have the information. Get the word out. Understand it. Talk to your roommates. Uh, use social media. Let people know today is a different day. And it starts with three words, enough is enough, and we mean it. Thank you, and God bless you. Again, I want to thank the governor, bucking for leading feminist of the state. Uh, I hope we were all taking notes on those statistics. Uh, and I want to thank all of you for being here. And now it is, uh, we conclude the program, but we want to remind you that the word has to go forth from all of you and from us. Thank you so much for being here today. And again, thank you, governor. <laughs>